Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Checking in on the commodity world, dollar, gold, miners, oil, and natural gas. We'll start on the weekly timeframes and then zoom in from there. So the dollar is starting to look a little bit like a rounded top here. We're losing some of the support levels. I'm watching these exponential moving averages. The four period, or actually this is the 12 period, is starting to curl to the downside. I'm watching to see if it's going to get enough pullback to cross the 26 period bearish because they have given some nice signals in the past with the follow through from them. But... On the weekly time frame, we have a couple of supports that were established on the way up. We did technically lose the higher low pattern. Didn't get, a, get much of a pullback at this point from that support being lost. Two short-term levels nearby are 9604 and 9568. So still holding on to a base of support, but starting to shift momentum a little bit. The daily time frame, we can see the bulls held a key short-term support level 9617 and 9619 is a little double bottom at those levels and anything under 97.12 is a lower high. So the bulls have momentum in their favor. The, or I should say the bears have momentum in their favor. The bulls finally held this support, but the question is, are we just gonna bounce and see a lower high compared to 97.12? Bear cross of the exponential moving averages, 12 and 26 period on the daily time frame. So we're watching to see if that's going to follow through on the weekly time frame as well. So at this point, a nice clear tightening range to be watching. And this is our range for the next However long we stay within it, that's the most important levels for me in the short term. If we break bearish on the dollar, it's a great sign for the gold bulls who are seeing some strength and closing at the high of the week. Really nice follow through. Again, the crosses of the exponential moving averages. Bull cross here, last time that happened, we saw some pretty solid follow through from the bulls in the months following it. And the bulls are obviously hoping that's the case here again. Zooming out longer term, let's look at the monthly chart. And we're watching for the potential of an equilibrium on the monthly. If we see a solid move here, even for the next couple of months, and set a lower high compared to 1366, then we'll look to pull back and form a higher low. It's entirely possible that the gold market here for the first half of 2019 stays in this range where we just look to tighten up and set that lower high, then pull back for a higher low and give us a long drawn out monthly equilibrium. That's a possibility. And at this point with where we stand, 1280, to get up to that resistance break and not see a lower high, we're going to need another 8% in gold. Certainly possible, especially if market fears continue and we roll over to lower lows in the market. But the most likely scenario for me is to stay in this tightening range in through the first half of 2019. So zooming into the daily time frame, we're very extended and the bulls have complete control. We've seen higher lows on the daily time frame six days in a row. The last daily higher low that we established of clear support was down at 1241. The RSI is above 70 on the daily time frame. Look at the last time that happened. That was all the way back in January 2018. So essentially 11 months to a year for the first time this RSI on the daily has gotten this high. And while it does show that the bulls are in full control, we certainly would not want to be making any bullish entries without some daily healthy consolidation, in my opinion. So when we lose the four hour uptrend, that's going to be the first indication that daily consolidation is coming. And you can see we've had a clear four hour uptrend pretty much since that 1241 previous daily higher low. So the most important short term level here, look at this little triple bottom down at 1275. If we break that level of 1275, daily consolidation will be underway to form a healthy higher low, in my opinion. But bigger picture, that monthly time frame is important to let us know that yes, gold is bullish, but you know any kind of major breakout, and actually, there's a lot of space for bulls to work with if they can break the upper 1300. So I'm gonna say ideal scenario, long, big picture, 2019, lower high compared to 1366, higher low in the mid to upper 1200s, and then a bull break and that would be a very significant bull break because, again, that would break to the highest prices that we've seen in many years. And that would be very notable. So gold's going to get interesting. And just looking at this long-term monthly chart for the first time. But let's see if that equilibrium is what ends up playing out. 
because that would be a great equilibrium if we break bull it won't give us the break of all these levels initially but it will increase the odds significantly that we are going to break those levels so that's what i'm going to be watching long term big picture for gold didn't mean to go that in depth but just happened one to point out want to point out the difference with the gold close at the high of the week and look at the miners upper wick last week upper week this week close at the low of the week complete opposite to gold closing at the high of the week so it's almost as if the market uh, weight of what we're seeing right now with the gold miners there's the two factors what the market is doing what gold is doing the market weight on these bull miners is outweighing the bullish gold sentiment so that's why we're seeing weakness in these miners in my opinion and with the inability to break that resistance we have a clear daily lower high and a bit of an equilibrium so i'm watching this top of the bull move as a resistance level support is 2027 we double topped 2140 and 2147 and now the bulls are heading down to test this support of 2027 so it's a tightening range on this daily time frame if the gold if let's start from the dollar if the dollar double bottom holds and we see a bounce the next few days if gold pulls back and breaks the four hour uptrend which again there's no sign of that but if that happens then the bear miners are going to be a good short-term play and that's because we're going to get a daily break of this tight pattern tightening pattern on gdx and gdxj same thing upper wick inability to break resistance tightening daily time frame if we lose the higher lows we're going to look for healthy weekly consolidation on these miners and that's going to give the bear miners an opportunity so if i were looking bearish on the miners i want to see all those things line up i want to see the dollar hold the support i want to see gold lose the four hour uptrend and i want to see the bull miners lose these daily higher lows so keeping an eye out for the key support on gdxj 2901 and then 2845 which would lose the uptrend if those levels do break oil on the weekly time frame bullish reversal candlestick oil is oversold we know we're due for a bounce the start of the oversold bounce on oil was the start of the bounce in the s p 500 i do believe they are still significantly linked although they broke that correlation and that was due to pension fund rebalancing in my opinion that led to a big influx of capital into the equity markets 60 billion plus and that's when you break correlations when you have a surge in volume in one of whatever you're measuring against itself or against other things in those correlations so the fact that all that money went into the stocks we saw equities get continuation on its bounce we're on the daily time frame for oil it started the bounce on the same day as the markets spy ended up getting some follow-through with higher highs both of the next two days and oil seeing healthy consolidation but still not a lot of proof for the bulls that the bottom is in on oil as at this point it's healthy consolidation absolutely but we need to get over these exponential resistances the 12 and 26 period on the daily time frame we need to change the daily trend with higher lows and higher highs that's what we need in order to be believers that the oil bulls are going to show up so 44.33 is a very clear support level that's a double bottom essentially and that's a support level that we can use as a bottom fishing level so if we go bullish on oil early this coming week we would exit if this support level does break and the bulls are going to have to break resistance at 46.20 in order to break out of this tightening range so a nice clear tight range on the four hour time frame to be watching for oil this coming week and if we get a bull break in my opinion that's going to help the s p 500 keep its bounce underway if we get a bear break in my opinion that's going to add some weight on the s p 500 and lead to consolidation sooner than it would if oil were to break bullish so whether you're trading stocks or commodities watching how oil breaks this four hour pattern heading into next week is going to be important natural gas on the weekly time frame i believe there's going to be a significant opportunity for bulls in natural gas as swing traders in the near term future the reason i say that is we had the huge breakout with huge bull opportunity we had a significant pullback and look at the volume i'm looking at nat gas usd here but this is very healthy declining bear volume on the pullback we have given back a very significant amount of this move from the high we've now given back a third of that move so 33 and i shouldn't say a third of that move we've given back 33 percent from that high that's very significant and we're going to be looking for a higher low to form the last support down in this range is 3091 and we also have a bunch of price action in this range that could act as support as well all of this trading from back in january all the way through pretty much all of 2017 and that price action which previously was acting as resistance after the huge breakout now we're going to see if this price range acts as support 
But what I'm looking for is a daily trend change to give the indication that our weekly higher low has been established. And even on a weak bounce, if we get a weak bounce from this pullback, I would say a weak bounce would get us to 380. And from where we currently stand, from the low of this pullback, that is talking about a 15% bounce. And if you're playing three times leveraged ETFs, we're talking 40, 45% move. So obviously that's significant opportunity. And that would just be, you know, us looking for a little lower high and a weak bounce attempt. If the bulls were going to get a significant bounce attempt and give us a weekly equilibrium, we would be looking more so up towards the $4 range, which is an even bigger percentage move. So again, there's no indication that the natural gas bottom is in, but everything about technical analysis and observation is telling me that the low on the weekly time frame is likely going to be set sooner rather than later, especially with the daily RSI close to oversold at this point. So the bulls have attempted to establish a couple support levels, but it's just leading to little bear flags. We've got resistance at 393, and then we've got now a little resistance at 359, just under 360. We can round those and call that. So 393 and 360 are our key resistances. We had a weak close on Friday, and we're coming down to test this support level, which is the lowest price we've seen at this point. We're going to be watching first thing Sunday night and into Monday. Can 3295 hold as a double bottom of support? If it can, the bulls have to break 3596 or 360 to prove themselves on the daily time frame. So the momentum is still favoring the bears. We're at the bottom of this move at this point. If we break support of 3295, the daily RSI is going to be right at about 30. And the next support level we're looking at is down at 312.9. So there is a lack of support, but this is the kind of move where we know to have our attention looking for signs that the bulls are about to show up. The first indication will be a shorter term time frame changing the trend. The hourly chart just gave us nothing but lower highs and lower lows all the second half of this week. The hourly change in trend would be an initial indication and the earliest indication, the highest risk, highest reward indication that the weekly higher low has been established. Then if we change the trend on the four hour time frame, and right now bulls are hoping that we can form a four hour higher low and a bounce to remain within this range and not break the low of the pullback to this point. So if Sunday or into Monday, we can get a bounce and look for a lower high compared to 360, that's the ideal start to the week for the bulls. And that would give us an equilibrium and tightening range on the four hour time frame to be watching. When we change the four hour trend, that to me would be the first signal that I would act on for the potential of the weekly higher low being set. So this four hour trend and four hour time frame is going to be the most important for me and watching for that trend change on this four hour time frame for the bounce to get going essentially. So that's what we're going to be keeping an eye on for the next two weeks, I'd say I'm going to be pretty focused on watching natural gas throughout each day, watching it, checking in every morning, seeing if I get a setup that I like to make entries. And if I'm making an entry before we have clear indications, I'm going to be scaling in using smaller capital, keeping, you know, risk low by not, you know, just entering large positions and then not, have, not having any cash. I would be very comfortable scaling into natural gas in daily oversold conditions. So I want to leave, you know, three or four orders where if we continue pulling back and drop down into the low $3 range, I would like the risk to reward to just begin scaling in. And that's essentially the same kind of play that we just had on the S&P 500 when we played that bounce. It got to the point where we were so extended to the downside, we knew a bounce was coming and it's just inevitable in terms of when it's going to happen. So that's why I started to scale in into weakness knowing that the opportunity for that bounce was going to be approaching. So I may take the same approach for natural gas. First things first, I need to see, can this support hold? And can we have a tightening four hour pattern into the start of this coming week? Hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you all soon. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Coming at you live from Robe Life with some remedy tips, some tips to have around the house whenever you're feeling sick, feel something coming on, Go to the tinctures and you can find these online, but ideally support someone local who makes these. This is actually from a woman in West Virginia that I stayed with maybe, oh man, eight years ago when I was woofing and traveling around the country and reached out to her and bought a whole bunch of her products to support her. But I put do these things, you just put them into some water. If I feel cold coming on, I'll do elderberry, that kick-ass immune, some echinacea, throw that all into some water. I'll eat some raw garlic get some raw ginger going, 
And every day, just some mushroom regimen, chaga, maitake, turkey tail, putting those into some water, and then things like nettle leaf and chamomile if I'm trying to sleep, dandy blend to start the morning off, but research this stuff. Research, research chaga and maitake and turkey tail and their medicinal benefits, and these are all things that, like I said, if you feel like a sickness coming on, they will jack up your immune system and get it ready to go. Uh, research all these right here that you're seeing in this view. Those are the ones to do. So that's all I got for you, but hopefully some insight that some of you will look into and take advantage of. Thanks for tuning in.